Hi everybody, I hope you're well and welcome to another video. In today's video, I'm again at Eve's Hall with my amazing friend Demi and I'm going to show you a really cool and I think pretty unique way to create bokeh. So, let's crack on. So before we get into the really cool and fun bit, I'm just first of all going to get my lighting setup correct on Demi over here. So I'm going to light Demi with the Magbox. The Magbox is such a good soft box. It creates really beautiful light. I'm gonna place that relatively close to Demi because all I'm looking for at this stage is to light Demi more or less just from the waist up because the end shot, which I'm hoping to take, will more or less only contain Demi from sort of like here and up. So I'm just gonna concentrate at the moment on getting my settings correct for lighting Demi. I already know because I'm going to be shooting through the magical thing which you don't know what it is yet, that I want to be at a very wide aperture. So I'm going to set my aperture at 1.8. At the moment I'm on my Sony 35mm. That dictates the beginning of the exposure. I also know that I really want to try and kill all the ambient light in the room. So to do that, I'm gonna put my ISO at 100. The speed light at the moment, because we're in very dark conditions here, doesn't have to work very hard at all. So at the moment it's only on 132 power. So in the mag box I just have one AD200, as you can see there, and it's at say 132. So I'm just gonna take a quick test shot of Demi. Beautiful. Now that's actually pretty decent. We've got a bit of reflection in the glass at the back, but that's not a big problem. Now I might just see what happens if I drop the speed light down to 164. Yeah, that's even better, I think. You can see there the quality of light that a softbox gives you. Now, one thing to bear in mind with a softbox is you want to try and have it as close as possible to your subject because the closer the light source, the softer the light will be. So I try and have the speed light as close as possible to Demi. That's going to give us the best and most flattering light. So we have the light now on Demi. So I know that I don't need to change anything else. What I do want to now do is make the foreground more interesting. And that's where the fun bits start. Stops. So one of the things that making these videos is really good for is it makes me really try and think about coming up with new ideas for creative wedding photographs. So I was thinking literally just last night, what could we use to make really cool foreground bokeh? Now bear in mind that foreground bokeh looks best when you have little speckles of bright area, often on things like metal. So as you will have seen in this video, which I did with my friend Beth, where we used the light that was on a bar, that created really good foreground bokeh. But I was wondering, is there anything that we can use that is more easier to hand than, than a bar? And then I thought, what's shiny? and what's easy accessible. And then I realized, I wonder what tin foil would look like. So, for the first time ever, I'm going to be using strong kitchen foil to create the foreground bokeh. Now, one of the things that I realized is, when again, when I was running through all this in my head last night, is that it's one thing having foil. First of all, we want to scrunch up that foil because I say what I want is to have these little areas of light. But I think if I just put the foil there, that's not gonna be great for the whole composition because we're only gonna have a little bit of cool bokeh at the bottom. So I wanted to create a circle that I could shoot through. And that's where I thought this gorilla pod might be useful. This is me trying this out for the, literally for the first time. So I'm hoping it's going to work. So what I'm thinking is if I create a circle like this, and then wrap that circle up in tin foil. If this doesn't work, well one, you're never gonna see the video, but I'm gonna look like a right idiot doing this. So let's just use more tin foil. I've gone for strong tin foil, I don't think it matters. Uh, let's just take a quick test shot. The problem we're going to have, as things stand at the moment, is that this foreground bokeh is very, very dark. So it's going to be virtually, I imagine when I take this shot now, the light on Demi I imagine to be really good, yeah, but we can't see anything of the foil. So we're going to have to light that foil. So to do that, I'm going to bring in a second speed light now, which I'm going to put here to light the foil. Okay, so I'm adding on a Godox V860 speed light, and I say the job 
of this speed light is just going to be to light up this foreground bokeh. So I want this speed light to be very low power. So I'm going to put this on its lowest setting as a kickoff, which is 128 power. This is the moment of truth. That's cool. That looks good. It's really exciting when you do this for the, like, for the first time because I like to have these ideas in my head, but they don't always come off. But that, I think, is very cool. So what I'm just going to do to make that a bit better, as you see on the photograph that I'm showing on the screen now, there's just a little edge in the top left-hand corner which isn't filled with the foil. So I'm just going to use some more foil just to pad out this area. Now I'll say I've never done this before, so I've not done this at a wedding. I probably would do if it works, but be aware that you're going to get some funny looks. But foil is cheap. So it's a very, very cheap way to create, hopefully, a quite a cool effect. So this is what we're gonna be shooting through now. Oh, I've still got a big gap top left, so I need to just fill that in. So let's just put a little bit more foil on. <laughs> I am no expert at this. I don't think it takes a lot of skill. But um, the more scrunched up the foil is, the better it's going to be. Because that's what's going to give us a little small areas of shininess. And it's those small areas of shininess that are going to create the bokeh. So if you have the foil and it's all flat, it's not going to work. So scrunch it up first, which is why I think strong tin foil is probably the best bet. Hopefully now, if I can just shoot through this little gap. Yeah, beautiful Demi. When you're taking shots like this, it's important to shoot at a very wide aperture because that's what's gonna create the really cool bokeh. That's amazing, Demi. I'm gonna try a couple of things. First of all, I'm going to shoot on the 85 mil. Once I have my settings all dialed in, I will often shoot on a different focal length just to see A, what happens, but also for the sake of like another 30 seconds, it gives you often quite a different look for very little extra effort. Beautiful, Demi. Yeah, that was good as well. So again, now that I've got my settings right, we might as well just keep on shooting. But actually, just to look towards that light for me, Demi. Don't blind yourself, that's good. This is just your head and shoulders, Demi, gorgeous. Okay, the last thing that I think we'll do, again, I'm really pleased with what we've got. For something that I've not tried before, I'm quite, imp quite impressed with this one. I'm now going to add on a Magmod colored gel to this speed light to try and give us a different color in the foreground. As it happens, I actually really like the look of this photograph as it is but we might as well see what happens if we do add a colored gel do you have a preference demi should we go for red or blue blue good choice because it's in my hand i love doing shoots like this because this is just the best time to experiment i would never do anything like this on a wedding day if i hadn't already tried it out that would be madness but doing style shoots like this just for fun is a really good way of testing things like this out I really like this. You've chosen a good colour here, Demi. That looks amazing. It's funny, I thought that I would prefer the 35mm shots, but I'm actually really liking these 85mm shots. But I'm going to do now is go back onto the 35. Again, the great thing about shooting in manual, I'm now not changing any of my settings. So everything is in manual. The speed light that's lighting Demi is in manual. This flash is in manual. All my settings are, so I don't have to worry about that anymore. All I'm worried about now is just the composition. That's amazing. These actually, I think, might be my favourites. So just before we finish, I'm just going to pop on a red gel. Or not red, magenta, just because it's to hand. Okay, magma stuff just makes everything so easy just to change a colour like that. Do you know what? It might even be better. And now, Crash, just to wrap your arms around it yourself again, if that's right, and just looking towards that light. That's beautiful. So for the very last shots I'm going to take, I put the 85mm back on. We've still got our magenta gel here, and I'm just going to shoot with this, because I think I really like the magenta. Thank you very much, Demi. You were amazing. I'm really impressed with how this worked. So bear in mind that the reason that this has worked well is because when we scrunch up the tinfoil, we get all these little areas of brightness, and it's that that creates the really cool foreground bokeh. Now, just to add the Patreon version of this video, I will show you how I edit the photographs from this shoot. So if you're watching on Patreon, please keep on watching because you're now going to see me editing these photographs. But if you're watching on YouTube, thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time and thank you very much Demi you were amazing perfect